the Six Nations is just days away, but it's Johnny Sexton's rejection of a contract with the IRFU and apparent big money move harassing Metro that kicks off our discussions tonight. And Bernard, I suppose what we have to do is clarify that even though Rassing aren't going to confirm it because they can't, we, we are certain that he is going to France. Yeah, pretty certain he's, uh, he's signed for Racing Metro. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of clubs in France looking for him when he, when he came on the market, but uh, the Eleanor rules, the body who run the league over there, you, you can't announce a signing until after April the 15th, which is amazing. I think they're going to have to look at it because there's been a huge amount of players already signed. Even the two cast coaches who are, we all know are going to race in Metro next year have never officially been uh, stated, has never been officially stated that they've, they've, they've moved to race in Metro, even though that deal was done in September. Um, if you look at the other players they brought in, the likes of uh, Jamie Roberts, the two Northampton props, Kruger, um, it's just been speculation. Racing Metro have never commented on it. The clubs in Northampton and, and Cardiff haven't commented on it either, but because Johnny and, uh, is such an important part of, of, of Irish rugby, and I suppose no one's left Ireland for a long time, no one of his profile anyway, um, it's, a, it's a massive story and there's been conflicting reports, uh, but as far as I'm, I'm concerned, it's a done deal and he'll be playing for Racing Metro next year. Yeah, Jerry, maybe we should explain why it is particularly important and unique that it's Johnny Sexton who is going as opposed to one of the other frontline Irish players. Well, he was only on provincial contract up until two years ago. He's cracked the international scene and with it, international contracts relatively late in his career. Um, he's now 27, he's been two years as a high ear earner. He's the most remarkable player and the highest earning player potentially in Irish rugby now. So he's, if you like, cashing his chips. It's a relatively short window for him. It's not like one of the long-serving players at the top of the Irish game, like an O'Driscoll, or O'Gara, or O'Connell, or O'Callaghan, who, with the tax rebate after 10 years, would be quite significant. I'm sure that he and his agent, Fintan Drury, have done the maths, and uh, that's why financially it make, makes a lot of appeal to him. And that's the main reason he's going. He's a slightly unique case, Johnny, compared to other Irish players. Yeah, maybe we should get, before we get to Frankie, maybe Bernard, you should outline the, the huge financial aspect of this and how much he, he's likely to be making. I, I think everyone's heard of, heard the figure, and, you know, that's net apparently. Uh, a lot of contracts. So 750,000 a year net. That's, that's, that's the figure that's being bandied about. In fairness, there is other guys, there is that kind of money on offer in rare cases in, 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 in France. Johnny Wilkins is supposed to be on a million a year. Racing Metro looked for Dan Carter. Before um, November, November yeah. uh, 1.1 million. Um, he did a stint in Perpignan, 700,000. He ended up only playing a couple of games because uh, he had an injury. So there is guys like Luke McAllister, um, Brian Habana. Or, that's the kind of money that's in France at the moment, you know, for the top top players. And uh, um, the Eleanor are currently renegotiating the television rights, and already the figures have double what they currently get. So that money's going to seep back into the clubs. Attendances are up, generally sold out every week. It's a thriving league, and I suppose from the Celtic Nation's point of view, the, with the Rabo um, not being maybe as popular, as well supported as, as the Viva Premiership and, and the Top 14, uh, revenue streams are down, and that's, that's a worry. You know? And for the guys who play in the Rabo, if, if they're not playing in front of the best uh, big crowds and against the best players, will they decide, OK, I want to go to play, prove myself in the Top 14? They've also got better factors, haven't they? There's a yeah. new nouveau riche, if you Absolutely. like, of Toulon and Racing, yeah. who are now rubbing shoulders with Claremont and Toulouse, and they're their budgets dwarf a lot of the other teams in the top flight. Uh, absolutely, and Montpellier next year have a, have a sugar daddy who just yes. come in and, and they're spending money. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it because there's a lot of very wealthy people in France and to take a rugby club over, it gives them notoriety, it gives them uh, prestige. And I, I, at the moment, I can only see it going bigger and bigger, to be honest, and I can see those kind of salaries you know, um, becoming more widespread down, down the road. So that means that all that amount of money, it makes life very difficult for the IRFU. But could they have done more to keep Johnny Sexton here? Well, it was a bit like indecent proposal, wasn't it? I mean, all, <laughs> all your values get challenged when, of course, money comes into the situation. And I think the important thing to realise here is that I don't think anybody's to blame here. Uh, Johnny Sexton, um, if I was in his shoes, I'm sure the lads would agree here, there was an extraordinary amount of money put in front of him, uh, especially given the economic climate that's out there at the moment. He is at that level, and Jerry rightly alluded to it, that it's not really going to affect his tax rebate. You'd have to back him getting into a position here in a professional contract within in two or three years' time, so that wouldn't affect the money he's going to get back. But he was in a situation, and the IRFU were in a situation, uh, the IRFU cannot... Uh, and will not compete with the figures out in France. Well, could they have competed better than they yeah. did? I, they have to draw a line somewhere. And I, I, can tell you, I can tell you this, so this has been going on for a few years, and it's been a game of poker with agents going back and forth, the IRFU. In my experience with the IRFU, they're very fair. Um, I think they're a very responsible organisation commercially, that they cannot, and they have to draw a line somewhere. 
And not uh, all know, players would have necessarily agree with you, though, Frankie. Sure, Some of them are unhappy. I, I, I can only, I and, can only and, talk about my, my personal experience with them in, in dealing with them. But they should and, have made him the yeah. best paid player in Irish rugby. He's worth that. If they haven't made that offer, none of us know what the offer was, then they slipped up on that. And mm. also, Frankie, they've got to start coming to the negotiation table sooner. There's no point in outlining all these rules. We'll, we'll only talk to you in November. Mm. Johnny you, Sexton's you should probably explain the, the fact that Johnny the, Sexton went looking for these negotiations earlier, didn't right, he? Right, in August. It started last season. If they'd gone to Johnny Sexton last August and, and maybe offered him something on a par with what supposedly Jamie Heasel was earning to make him either the joint or best paid player in Irish rugby, there's every chance that Johnny Sexton might still be. It's, it's a possibility. I, yeah, I think the figures you're talking, even if they were looking at throwing an extra 50 grand, I mean, they're just not going to compete. Yeah, but they didn't know back in August that he could get 750 grand a, but, a year. But the important thing is here is none of us here will know exactly what went on, the dynamics of the negotiating. But we right? do know they don't go to the negotiation table before November, isn't that true? Um, that would That's be, their that protocol, would, that would be and true. then they set a and, deadline and, at the end they, of December. And they, they do it after the Autumn Internationals yeah. to have a look at the, the guys to see how they're performing, to see who's going to get national contracts. So, I mean, they have to. They are, they are a very responsible organisation, I would think. And I'm not, I'm not saying Johnny's wrong. I'm not saying the IRFU are, are wrong. I, th I don't think it's anybody's fault. The market is distorted with the, the massive money over in France. Is the, the, what is on everybody's mind now, though, Bernard, is is this going to open the way and are we going to start seeing Irish players just moving to big money clubs in, in France? I don't think so short term, I think Johnny is, is an exception given the quality that he's going to give to race and Metro. I think as well, everyone is looking at the money and obviously it's a factor, but, and people said why, don't you, why wouldn't he go to Toulouse or Claremont? I actually think he can be part of something really special in race and Metro. I genuinely believe the players they recruited, the new coaches going there, Lawrence Eddy's ambition, they have a training centre which is the best in Europe, they're building a new stadium, they want silverware and to do that with Racing Metro, you know, would be would even add to what he's done in Ireland already, and come back a better player. So I think, and knowing Johnny, he wouldn't be just focused on the money because he's not that kind of guy. It's it's obviously a factor, but he can go there, live in Paris for two years, um, experience that, become a better player potentially, certainly learn different different ideas, and uh, and come back to Ireland. But I, I don't think I don't think he's going to open the floodgates, but it certainly has to keep us on our toes and the RFU on our toes. One or two more might now go because it's up the ante slightly. Yeah. Agents are a slight winner in this, and players are a slight winner in this. There are, the French are going to be more encouraged to look at the Irish market now. I wouldn't be surprised if one or two more go. Not a floodgate scenario, but one or two more would go. And for Leinster, it's particularly worrying because Joe Schmidt is en ending up at the end of next season. Um, Jamie Heasop's coming to the end of contract at the next season. Uh, Keen Healy and Sean O'Brien all in the next year or two. Rob Carr at the end of the season, and they've just lost their out half. I think to Jerry's point there that French clubs will start looking at Irish guys again. I think they've gone away from that. They just mm. felt, and certainly in, in my experience in Grenoble, they just think that they won't come. You know, you can make them a great offer, outbid the IRFU, but because of the system, because of how good it is, how professional it is, competing behind in cups, the Irish player would never go. And you're right, maybe now instead of going and getting a Southern Hemisphere player, they'll say, OK, look at... Mm. And because Irish will be highly regarded there, particularly at provincial level and the players mm. that are in it.